Okay, so my name is Johan Falk, and we're using Google Spreadsheets to um, code stuff that might be useful when creating board games. Um, we have seen now a function here that rolls, uh, in this case, 20 dice and uh, looks at how many equals we get. We got now five equals, and then we get five equals again, and then we get four equals, and sometimes I got eight or nine equals. Of course, you might be interested in knowing how often different results occur, not only that they differ. And to do this, and well, this is one of the things we actually would like to use uh, coding for, or, or computers in general, because they can do this uh, 10,000 times, and now then we can look at the distribution. So that is actually what we're going to do. We're gonna let a computer do, do this, or this script do this 10,000 times and see what the distribution looks like. Uh, to do this, I'm going to create a new function. Uh, I'm going to call it function uh, uh, simulate dice, die, dice rolls. Why not? And then we're going to take an input here to say how many dice we're going to roll, number of dice. So, and um, then I'm gonna say uh, let uh, iterations equal ten thousand. Now I'm gonna do another uh, loop. Let's say actually um, for a variable called i equals zero to start with. Uh, that should be less than number of iterations, while i is less than iterations, increase i by one. This is another way of writing for loops in JavaScript. Uh, there are some different ways of creating loops. Uh, Google them, read, on, uh, read up on them when you need it. This is one way of doing it. Okay, so 10,000 times we're going to do this. Um, let dice equal roll some die number of dice. So if we enter 20 here, we're going to get 20 dice. And then uh, count equals dice. Uh, result equals this. And we're going to actually store all the results in an array. So in the end, we're going to have 10,000 entries in this array. Uh, let result equal an empty array. And instead then of assigning a new value here, we're going to say um, result push this. So roll some die, count how many equals we got, and push that in onto the end of the result array. And then we're going to look at percentiles of this distribution. Uh, and I don't know how to code percentiles in JavaScript, and it would take us some time, so I'm going to Google this. This is another great uh, skill uh, to have when coding. Use Find others' code and reuse it. So I'm going to add a new tab here, and JS means JavaScript, shorthand for JavaScript. Calculate percentile. You can see I've Googled this before. So here is one way of creating or calculating percentiles and median and quartiles uh, in JavaScript or PHP. And we have a, uh, something here that is actually not how I would like to implement it because it's uh, it's a convoluted, uh, well, complicated uh, way of uh, writing things. This down here is better for us to use. Here is someone sharing code on GitHub, which is uh, very nice. Uh, and this is a utility function to calculate percentiles and percent ranks in JavaScript. Okay, so I'm just going to take all, well, actually, I'm going to click on this raw button here, select all, copy, and then go back here, because we're going to reference, reference this page soon. Down here, I'm going to create as a new function, function per, well, let's actually see what did we get 
it also uh, already includes percentile as a function. I'm not going to create a new function, I'm just going to reuse uh, the functions we've got. Then I'm going to percentile rank. No, I just want to have percentiles. Then I'm going to take this URL up here and do something very important. I'm going to say code taken from here. So steal, steal and borrow people's code, but tell them, tell, well, state in your code where you took it from. This is giving credit to the person who wrote this stuff, which is a, a good thing to, to do. OK. Uh, here is something very important. It returns the value of a given percentile in a sorted numeric array. All the results we get here, we get 10,000 uh, entries in the results array. They are not sorted, so we need to sort them. And you could, um, well, you could think that uh, when Googling how to sort arrays, you might think that this would give you the result. Let's see, result dot sort. This sorts the array alphabetically. JavaScript has some very weird um, standard of doing sorting. That means that uh, 10 comes before 2 because it starts with a 1. So we do another Google and say JavaScript uh, sort array numbers. How to sort an array of integers correctly, Stack Overflow. This is a good place to look. Uh, question, question. Some, uh, over a thousand people like this question. And here's an answer that even more like. It says, here's an array. Here's a sort function, uh, which gives us what we want. So I'm going to copy this and go back here. I'm going to remove this evil uh, alphabetically sorts thingy. So num array, this is the name of our array, which is res result sort function yada 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 yada. I don't know really what this means. I don't know JavaScript enough, but I know that it works. So let's see. Um, do um, I'm going to write some comments here just to uh, remind myself of what I'm doing. Um, roll the specified number of dice a lot of times and record how many equals we got in each roll. OK, that's what we're doing here sort the array numerically. This is needed for getting the percentile distribution. OK. And we could also have something here. Um, it's a large number of die rolls and count and this returns the distribution of number of equals, something like that. The number of, well, I'm not going to comment what this one is. I should actually do that, but I'm not doing it right now. OK, so we roll the dice. We sort the results uh, numerically, and now we're going to return the uh, the percentiles, say percentile 0, 5, 10, and so on, up to 100. We're going to do a loop. Uh, first, I'm going to create a variable, let output equal empty array. For p for percentile equals 0, p should be less than or equal to 100, p equals p plus 5. So start on 0, go up to uh, 100, 
and have an increment of five curly brackets. And now let's see here. We're going to call this percentile thingy here with the array we want to find the percentiles of and the percentile value, which is actually not given in, in uh, uh, 0, 5, 10, so on, but 0, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, and so on. So percentile, the array is the result, comma, p divided by 100. And this I should push into the output array. Output, push this. Okay. Build an array of percentiles. Yes. Well, percentile 1, 5, 10, 15, and so on. Return. Uh, re Turn the, the result. Return output. There we have it. Okay, so this is rather interesting. Let's try it. Simulate dice roll. Let's roll 20 die equals. Simulate dice roll 20 dice. Aim. Didn't I say? Okay, something's wrong. Let's see. I'm going to take this temporary function, simulate dice rolls 20. No, yeah. Okay, what happens when I run this? It says everything's fine. Okay, let's add a debugger statement here just before returning the output and debug. Okay, it seems to be pretty fine. So what's wrong? Name, simulate dice rolls. Debugging, this is important. What's in the name? Unknown function, simulate dice rolls. Function, simulate dice rolls. I have saved, have I not? Yes. Okay, so let's try reloading. That's always something you could do. Now this page will disappear as you'll see. Ah, now it works. Okay, so it just didn't really know that we had written this function. That's interesting. Come on, let's see the code. I want the code. There, thank you. Okay, so this is a percentile number of equals percentile zero, five, and so on down to percentile 100. Okay, so we can see here if we roll in this case, 21 dice, let's have 20, 20 dice. Uh, in most cases, say 75% of cases, you will get three, four, uh, three, four, five, or six, oh, four, five, or six equals. Getting seven equals, that gives you 90% of all outcomes. Getting eight or more is unlikely, but you have some probability of getting uh, a lot more. What can we do? We're almost done. This is a long video. I'm sorry about that, but it's hopefully useful. This is when when coding starts to become useful uh, for for simulating stuff or getting data for for board game development. I would say simulating dice roll. Um, let's do this. Actually, is it one above? Number of dice. Let's start with five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, you, you get the idea. 
Let's take this up to 20. And let's narrow this down a bit. Okay, so I can now, instead of just having 20 here, I can say this number of dice. Loading, loading. And here we go. Boom. So here's uh, pretty much data. Um, this is where you start saving time. Uh, you've done a lot of job uh, writing up this code, making it work, and now you can implement it over and over again, many, many, many times uh, easily. Um, let's make a graph of this just to see what it looks like. This is when it starts to get interesting. Well, maybe not so interesting. Basically just ugly. Okay, but that's it. Uh, we're gonna have a look at how some ways of tweaking this and doing more interesting stuff in the next video. It will not be as long as this video. Uh, see you, bye.